Howdy, and welcome to the channel. And today we're going to be going over some air compressors that Ryobi has put out. First, we have an older model. This is P731 from Ryobi. This is discontinued and you can no longer purchase it. This one is model P747. And this one's actually owned by my son. And this one is, uh, you could still get it at some of their outlet stores, but it's been discontinued as one that you can get from the big box store. And then, of course, we have model P739, which is a one-gallon air compressor. So a little specs that are on these. First of all, these two that are up front, both of these can go up to 150 PSI. They have digital readouts on them, so you can actually see what you're pumping something up to. So you take the digital readout, you bump it up where you want it at, you connect it to whatever you're airing up, and you tell it to start. It then takes it up to that point and shuts itself off. So these are really nice to have. They have lock-on um, connectors for your Schrader valves. This one has the old style bicycle to where you just put it on and you click it down and that locks it onto the valve stem. And then my son's has a twist on that actually twists where the valve cap goes. This twists onto the valve stem and stays connected. Both of these also have inflation features to where you can take this and this, and you can put them on their respective ports so that you can inflate things like a mattress to go swimming with or an air mattress to go camping with. So on this model, I actually carried this with me for years whenever we were in the RV, and it does very good at pumping up those high pressure tires. I've actually taken this up to 120 PSI and have successfully pumped tires with it. Yes, it takes a long time to go to 120 PSI. Ooh, hurry up. But if you're sitting on the side of the road and you need your tire inflated, this will do the work for you. I have actually rescued several RVers with flat or low tires using this and actually got them up to anywhere from 60 to 80 PSI, depending on the tire that they had and the load they were carrying. So I love this one. Now, unfortunately, this one no longer works for me. This is one of the tools that I've had from Ryobi that has gone out. Now, the reason it went out technically is not a fault of Ryobi. It was left outside. My kids were using it to air up their bicycle tires, and they left it outside during a rainstorm, and that caused the pump to go out. However, I still kept it after that because I was going to pull it apart and attempt to repair it, and I stuck it inside an air-conditioned uh, space but the sun was coming through the window and it actually broke the LCD to where the LCD doesn't work anymore. So since the LCD is broken, now there's more cost to repair it than there is to purchase a new one. So I simply have not done anything with it. Now this one from my son, this thing works great. He's had it for a long time. He's kept it away from windows and he's not had an issue with it. He also brings it in whenever he's done with it and he doesn't have any problems with it. So these two are actually very similar in nature. I don't know if the pumps are the same, but they both work really, really well. We love these little air compressors. And here, just a little bit, we'll show you how long it takes with this air compressor to pump up a standard car tire to 35 PSI. So now let's talk about model P739. This is a different style air compressor than the other ones because this is a tanked air compressor. Tanked air compressors work very good, especially with larger tanks, with air tools. Now, this is not going to have enough um, flow rate to be able to do something like a die grinder. However, this will have enough flow rate that you can do a little brad nailer. So this is going to work great for that. So if you're in a situation where you don't have a brad nailer from Ryobi, like this one up here, but you do have an air brad nailer, then you can use something like this in a portable location in order to be able to do some brad nails. And we'll show you here in just a little bit how this works as an air compressor using brad nails. So it's very simple. It already comes with pre-installed a nice little chuck on it. And you simply grab an air hose, connect it up. And then on the other end, you have another adapter that goes into your air tool whatever your air tool may be it may be an air chuck so you can air up tires or it may be an actual tool now whenever it comes to airing up tires if you have the choice between this and one of the other ones for example this one 
If that is your primary goal, is to air up tires, this is the way you want to go. This is the way. Because this, you're going to actually have to sit there and hold the trigger down, let this do the cycling, and pump and wait, and pump and wait, and pump and wait. Whereas this one, you simply attach it to the tire, tell it what PSI you want it to be on, turn it on, and you walk away, you're done. It airs up the tire, it auto shuts off, you don't have to do anything. And since these take a while, and even this is going to take a while, that means that you can go inside whenever it's cold out, you can let these things run, and it will air up your tires, and you can be in there drinking your coffee while it's airing up your car tires. So there is a difference between the two and the jobs that you're going to be using them for. So this unit here will do a maximum of 120 PSI. So there is less PSI that comes out of this than with one of these, because these again are 150 PSI. So let's see how long it takes to pump this one all the way up. And for that, we simply grab one of our batteries and we put it in. We see that we're at four bars. So we're gonna just take our battery and slide it in. Over here, we have our on off switch. So we're going to turn it on and we're going to see how long it takes to fully pump this one gallon tank to pressure. So now that we're fully up to pressure, we simply take our air, air hose, we connect it to our air coupler, and whatever we need on the end, for example, if we're wanting to air something up, we just put on our air chuck. By the way, lock and lube makes a really nice connector for an air chuck as well. And now we're going to dial up our PSI, so we simply pull out, and now we start turning up, and that will increase the pressure in our line all the way to our tool that we're using. Now, as I mentioned, this is something that you can use to do things like brad nails or crown stapler. So I have a crown stapler here, and let me connect it up, and let me grab some boards. Now, your crown molding is going to be a lot thinner than this wood, a lot thinner. But let's see if we have the proper pressure to attach a crown staple through this wood. There we go. Yes, we do. It is right here. That is our crown staple. And as you can hear, I did one and it didn't pump up. Let's do two. Let's do it until the air compressor drops enough pressure that it needs to kick on. So as you can see, we had no problem putting in five crown staples with this before it had to kick on. That's actually pretty decent. Again, this isn't something you're gonna to wanna to do every day. But if you're in an odd situation where you don't have an electric or a battery powered brad or a battery powered crown stapler, then this may actually be the solution that you need for your tool. All right, so now we're gonna see if this will allow us to shoot three inch nails into our wood. Now this is not something I would recommend doing with this air compressor in any way, shape or form. And in fact, I'm pretty sure Ryobi would say that this is a big no-go, don't do this, but let's see if it has enough flow and if it has enough PSI to actually drive a three inch nails with this nail gun. All right, let's try it one more time. Now that one, fully seated. This one hit something that was underneath. This is our board from the other day, so I'll probably hit another nail with it. We definitely went down. Let me try shooting another one in. That one's fully seated. And we're dropping about 10 to 15 PSI per hit. So as you can tell, we're going to get about four nails out of this before it has to pump itself back up. Shorter the nails, uh, the less aggressive the gun, the better it will probably do for you. But still, that's actually not bad. We had a couple that weren't fully seated, but one quick blow with the hammer would take care of that. Now, that's not to say that that's what this tool is for. Running a nail gun off this on a job site would be atrociously bad. So that's not what this tool is for. 
So keep that in mind. I'm just demonstrating what you can actually use this tool for. So there we go, that now took this 205-55 R16 tire this long to air up from zero PSI to 35 PSI. And if we pull out the battery, we'll see that we're still showing a full charge. So that means that it took less than half of one of the battery lights to actually consume or air up this tire all the way. So you're consuming very little battery overall. So that means with one of these, you could effectively air up 55, 16 wheels, four of them, and do it with a single battery with this air compressor. So those are the different Ryobi air compressors that I have and we have used here for many years now, very successfully and without any problem. If you have any questions about any of these air compressors, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And uh, you can leave questions like this one. You can also ask any questions about the tools that are behind me or any ones that you have seen in any of the previous videos. I'll be happy to answer those as well. Thanks for watching.